Hey guys, welcome back to Startup Screen Printing. Uh, I'm gonna burn a film, so I thought I'd show you guys my process. Now I've got a film ready here. This is just some um, business shirts that I'm gonna do. Uh, actually doing this for a friend of mine. So uh, you can see, lay it down here. Just a nice kind of floral design. I think she's gonna love it. We're doing it as a gift. Uh, we do this a lot when you own a screen print company. So uh, first thing I do, obviously you got the lights in here. I really don't worry about them that much, but since I'm gonna burn a screen, just to be safe, I'll go ahead and turn on my light, safe lights. So, you know, like I said before, I don't have a dark room. It's kind of all down here together. So um, I just turn on the lights. I've got the window tent on my basement windows here. Um, so I think I'll be good to go. First thing I'm gonna do, um, take this film. And I like to, um, let's get this set up here so you can see me. All right, so, uh, I like to trim this down a little bit. So let me trim it down. Bring the film down to a little more manageable size. And then I'll take some tape. Let's turn this around. Maybe you guys can see a little better what I'm actually doing. All right, take some tape. Just gonna throw it on the corners here sticky side up and then once I'm done there you know what I can actually do this in the light but we're not gonna worry about that I'm gonna pull out my screen uh, registration template helper thing here I uh, made this um, custom for my press and my size screens and stuff so um, you can buy these online uh, Ryan it most of the time they come as a film um, but as you can see I've done mine on like a, a hardback uh, you know foam core type thing um, so it's a little more sturdy um, and still does the same thing I don't have to have a light shining through the lines are nice and dark and of course it is branded um, so uh, if any of you would be interested in this um, I'd be happy to uh, you know, sell these to you uh, either as the board here like this and custom make it um, or just provide you with the file and you can print it yourself and order it um, wherever you'd like. Um, so let me know in the comments if that interests you, if you'd like to have something like that, um, if you think this would be useful for you um, and I'd be happy to do it. So uh, you'll hear occasionally my uh, power washer make some sounds every now and then. So bear with me on that. All right, so now I'm gonna find a screen. This is a little bit more detailed uh, with this print, so um, I'm gonna need something that, let me set this down. It's probably be a lot better. We'll just turn it here so you can see. All right, so pull my screens out here. Got them all in this rack. Uh, just got a few left that are still coated. Um, I'm gonna do one, either a 230 or a 305. 200 might work. Got some pretty thin lines, so that one's a 200 as well. That's a 305. Let's, you know what, I think the 200 will probably be fine. Let's do a 200. With water-based printing, um, my smallest screen size is a 156. So uh, with Plastisol, most of the time you'll get something like a 110 or an 80 something um, to do white ink and stuff. but. My smallest and most I use most often is a 156. So, all right, screen face down. Here so you can see. Screen face down, I place it on the outlines here and then just let it fall straight down. And then I'm gonna press down to make sure the ink adheres, or the tape adheres. All right, so now I've got my film on there, good to go. So we're gonna take this over here to my exposure unit. Let's set this up here and bring it down so you can see me. All right, exposure unit, compression pad. Uh, it's just foam, comes with the exposure unit. Since this is not a vacuum. And I'm just gonna pop it up. I need to clean the glass, but it's not too bad right now. Close this down. Um, I've got my reading on about 29 seconds. Um, this has worked well for me um, for most any, <laughs> honestly, most most any um, uh, screen size. Um, 
but that's what I do most often for the 156 and 200s um, is right at about 29 seconds. Sometimes I'll drop it down a little bit for the 305. Um, do you testing? I've tested it enough for me to know that this is pretty consistent. So we're going to throw that on there um, and let that cook for 29 seconds. Um, and then we'll take it over and give it a little rinse and we'll start to see the design come through and be ready to actually uh, wash out the rest of the design. All right, film, just gonna set aside, but I wanna set it away from any potential splashing because it's, can the water kind of mess up the film. Obviously I need to do some cleaning, my screen's in here. <laughs> so let's pull these out for now. Took a break from printing for a while um, through, the, through January. It's kind of a time off for myself and I uh, just need to get back into it and get some stuff cleaned. All right, just gonna give the inkwell side a good coating there. And we're gonna flip this around and see the design popping through there. Give a good coating on the back. We'll let that sit for a few seconds and then we'll be ready to burn out the rest of it. Or, to, I'm sorry, wash out the rest of it. I can start to see a little bit. Now, one thing I don't want to do is start really bearing down on this because with it being a 200 mesh, even the 156 mesh, and especially when you get up to higher, the 305 and, and uh, higher than 200, really, um, it's going to be really easy to push that stuff out with a power washer. You know, if I was using a garden hose, that'd be one thing, but using a power washer would be really easy to start washing all of this stuff out, even though it's been exposed. So I want to be want to be careful with. It. I'll start see it start to break down. <laughs> looking pretty good now you you might either you're somebody out there who's a professional at this or uh, you've watched enough videos and think gosh shouldn't it be done by now I mean it, it's, he's really going at it um, and I just like to be careful with this stuff I just like to kind of take it easy a little bit at a time um, and make sure that I'm not really blowing this out um, and I'm retaining good detail and this this has worked well for me so um, give it a try if this works great for you I hope it does if not then you may need to do a different process So that's good now. Now a lot of this emulsion now is starting to soften up. Um, so I want to be careful about how I let it kind of run. And, and so I used a, a, a compressor to help this. So I've got a nozzle here on the end, uh, nice and thin. It makes a nice, uh, powerful compression at the end. The trigger is easy to use. So.
All right. I think that's pretty good. I don't have this on super high pressure, so because um, again, I don't want to don't want to boil it out. But what I wanted to do is kind of semi dry it, get most of the water, um, you know, not running down it because some of this layer, top layer of molson can kind of run down and get in to the, the area where you've exposed or where you've washed out rather. And uh, then when you go set this out, I'm gonna go set it out in the sun to dry. When you set this out to dry, um, that's gonna expose that residue that, that, that's run down into the design and, and lock in that part of the design. And so when you go to print now, it's gonna be blocked. And you're gonna have to rub and rub and rub with some aqua wash and really try and get that to open back up and risk kind of ruining the stencil. So um, I do kind of a semi dry there to make sure that I don't have anything running anymore on the screen. But obviously the screen's still wet. Um, so now I'm just gonna go set this out in the sun and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, we're good now. Lights are back on. That screen is outside drying. Um, and so I'm ready, I'll be ready to print that this evening or tomorrow, uh, whenever we get all the stuff in that we wanna, wanna print for this person. We've got some, some uh, just a few items that we're gonna give her, so we wanna print that on there. Um, so that's my process. That's what I've used um, for seven years now uh, to, to burn screens. Um, I, I had a dark room for a little while when I had black plastic surrounding here, um, but it wasn't really necessary. So I didn't worry about it too much. Um, so I, I've just kind of opened up the whole area. I've tested these lights to see if it really bothers the emulsion. It really hasn't been a big deal. It's not really affected it that much. So, you know, I've got them sitting over there under the, under the blanket and that kind of keeps the dust off, but light gets in and I've got this light on in the basement here all day, every day, just about. So, um, and, and you saw that screen exposed just fine. And that will work just fine. To, I'll print those shirts and uh, I'll be able to, to wipe it out and print more, uh, even though it's water-based. Because, um, you know, obviously you can't leave water-based ink in a screen. Like you can't plastisol, um, it will harden up and uh, dry up and, and you'll have a hard time getting it out of the screen. So um, let me know. Yeah, if you want to, if you want, if you guys are interested in that um, template that I have, um, again, I'll show that to you here. Um, it's, it's a great size. I mean, uh, you can see it's got um, lots of different marks and it kind of helps me line up the film and then that transitions over to um, the platens, um, and I know that I can put that crosshair in the same spot and uh, and it'll work out. And then plus I got this a certain size to fit perfectly inside of this top rack here of this mobile screen rack. Um, so it really just works great. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, maybe I'll put some of those um, online uh, for sale and ship them to you guys. Um, so let me know if that's something you would be interested in, either the digital file or the printed version. I'm happy to do that. Um, any questions you might have, let me know. Um, I'm using the um, base layer emulsion, uh, the complete. So, you know, that's the emulsion that they say you really have to have dialed in. It's actually in this cabinet. But I don't have it dialed in. Base layer complete right there. So let me know what questions you might have. Happy to help. Until next time, see you in the next video.